So what's going on YouTube? This is Doug Jenkins from iMixandMaster.com and I'm going to show you one of my favorite pieces that I've purchased in a long time. I am doing a mastering session. I'm doing a traveling mastering session. So I have my master bus processor and uh, a new converter from Antelope. It's called the Antelope Amari and I saw some people posting on the mastering forums and stuff off of Facebook and i wanted to first talk about the sound of it now in this video since i'm working on a project i can't release this music this is a a cd and i, I just don't feel like getting in trouble um so with that being said i want to show you routing with it and i also want to talk about the sound quality real quick now the sound quality of this device is um i would say it is very very dynamic i mean unbelievable sound stage the thing that I notice is it has this certain thing it does to the mids and it's like articulated and I think that helps with really low volume stuff and it helps with today's systems. The Antelope company, I don't know if they engineered it because of that or they were listening on these systems, but you can really make out the the, the nuances. Like for example, there's a, there's a bell, like a jingle bell in this because this is a Christmas song and it has this like articulation that I can hear in the bell, almost like you can you can hear the uh, the resonance of that bell. It's it's mind blowing actually. Where on their earlier uh, converter they called it the Pure, so it was an Antelope Pure Two that I used before this, and I couldn't hear that on that because I did this master before the video to sort of do a shootout, so I could give you a little bit more of a educated you know opinion of this because I use them both and I just love them and I move on to the next thing and I love it. And there's a guy, the guy that I'm mastering with tomorrow, he said, whatever you do, don't sell that Amari. It has a way that it works with bass too. And the other thing I would like to say, and I hate saying this because so many people say this, but when somebody says it's musical, I can go into like my Mog EQ, a, a, a gentleman that I get to work with that works in Hollywood and he works on sound and film and he said, man, that's such a musical EQ. And I, I think what people mean by that is it, it doesn't it doesn't sound so sterile or unrealistic. You know, because some converters can become so clean that you sort of feel like you're you're missing something. Where the Amari doesn't doesn't have that. It has sort of a low end um, roundness that I can't describe. It's not louder, it's just bigger sounding. And it could be the dynamic range, the headroom on the converter. But it really, really lets you push bass in a mix and and not and not worry about not getting away with it, if that makes sense. It has a very holographic sound, something that I've always loved about me, about my style of mastering. It's like, okay, I want it to sort of, you know, wrap around the person even as a as a stereo mix. So today's video, I just wanted to give you a little quick rundown of that. But today's video, if you're gonna buy a two-channel converter, or any converter, you can learn how to route it. So this is how I route the Antelope Amari in my studio. So you you get to you know quit looking at my pretty face, and we're gonna zoom on this. And I also have this behind us, so we can see behind the actual rack, see what's going on. I can show you the ins and outs, and then I'm gonna pan this. This camera is going to be right up on the uh, the two devices up here, and then I have a Pro Tools session right here where I can show you how you route it back in Pro Tools and how I do it. So if I'm now in my studio before I zoom in, I have another converter down here. This is the Pure 2 and I'm using that as my monitor. Okay, so so the thing about the 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 Amari before I zoom in is it is a two channel converter where the pure two is actually two in four output so it had two output and then another two so it was a two in four out where the amari's two in two out the cool thing about the amari is the flexibility the routing i think some of the other companies they do the same thing like links but when you create a feed with a piece of hardware you're going to have to need you're going to need a dedicated monitor controller and most mastering rooms or most studios have one you can buy one uh a studio that i work out of has a cool one from dangerous dangerous music makes the d box and now they have the monitor controller right on there um you could use another interface if you're if you're tight on budget because you just bought the amari so you can use there's a lot of options to monitor from this device 
Now, if you're just using it as a two-channel converter, you don't need to do that. But if you plan on using hardware with it, you're going to have to find a dedicated controller just to play back because you're going to see when we route it. So let me zoom this in real quick. Let me go to the back as I move around so you don't get to see my whole body moving in front of the camera. So bear with me. I'm moving it, moving it, moving it. Hopefully we can see this. All right, that's going to be good. So you're going to be able to see the front of the Amari and the back of the Amari. So here's how this works. So we're looking at the, let's look at the front real quick. So on the Amari, it is a touch screen, but if you see here, the, the far left is USB. That's telling what's going to my monitors. So if I go to Pro Tools, my playback engine is the Amari. So if I'm going to use it this way, and this is my main interface for my studio, I'm going to set this as the Amari out. So that's the USB. So just, just think of that Pro Tools as USB. It's the easiest way to think of it. Now, if you look at the front once, I mean, if you look at this camera once again, so that's USB to monitor. So my one and two in Pro Tools is feeding my monitors. I have to, I have to feed the converter because if you look at the back of this, the Amari does have two inputs and outputs. You can see to the far right of the screen, bottom piece, it says Amari. It says monitor out, but then it says analog out. It, it mirrors that, okay? I, I was really, really trying to figure out where they were going with that. And, and I, I did have a complaint at first, like, why would you make a monitor out and then an analog out? But, but they, I don't know why. I mean, I'm going to give them a pass on this one because it's, it's that incredible sounding. So as you see in the bottom left of the, the interface, I'm running Spitif in and out. And that's feeding my Pure 2 just so I can feed my monitors. That's what I mean by having a monitor controller dedicated just for the output. Because if we don't do that, you're going to get a feedback loop when you're trying to feed a piece of hardware. So now look at the top. It says analog in. Look at the top of the Amari, the two XLRs. That is coming from the analog out of the portico. So left channel, right channel feeds the analog in, left channel, right channel of the Amari. And then to make a hardware insert, you're just going to send the output of the Amari back into the inputs of that uh, portico or whatever your bus processor and so forth. Now, this is what's really neat. So on the Amari, it's really simple. And the reason I wanted to do this video. So the first thing is, is I want USB. That would be the dry signal from Pro Tools. That would be the thing that I want to process, whether you have some plugins prior you know, we can get into a big debate on all kinds of stuff, plugins, hardware, plugins, hardware, but, but just for the sake of this video, let's just keep it, keep it just, just simple. So if I want to go out of Pro Tools, so this is the signal path and I'll make this really simple. So you, so you guys can follow along. So this would be, let's rename this Amari USB. All right. So this is the Amari USB right here. And that's going to go out of this channel then it's going to um, feed this USB the monitor is going out monitor so now I have control of what I want to send the actual hardware so what's really cool about this piece is you can set that from 24 to 18 dBU that's a different it's a different uh, push to that hardware, so you can experiment with that. 18 dBU is a little, little, you know, less dramatic. 24 dBU is pretty hot. It's coming at it, so you're pushing the actual converter hotter. So this thing goes really, really loud. The thing is, though, is you can really find that happy medium. I usually just set it to 20 dBU or 24 dBU. And then I just set it to zero. So I know that's line level. I know that that's what the, you know, that's what the song came in at. Or I will experiment. Did it come in at 18 dBU? Am I getting too much, you know, mids? Am I getting too much of this? So you just experiment with that. But what's really cool about this is then you're, you're actually going out of the USB. And then everything else on here is for your headphones. Here's a headphone 
one and two. You can do a stereo headphone. You can actually use this as a dual purpose. You can send it, now I know it's not meant to do this, but if you're really on a budget and you spend a lot of money on this, you can send those two outputs to a second set of uh, monitors. It's still sh it's still using a headphone amplifier, so don't don't like quote me and say, hey Doug, that's sort of stupid. But if you're just trying to get a rough sound, I've done it. It was pretty fun. Now that whatever is over here is what's returning. So there's one main output, and then everything else is a return. So it's returning the analog. As you see at the top of that, it says analog. So far left USB, everything else is analog. So it's actually monitoring to my to my pure two or whatever you have hooked up spitif it's monitoring analog and now you're going to hear the process signal now i said before the video started i really can't show you this song because i'm still working on it and it's not mine but the last row here is what you're recording so this is what you're playing this is what you're recording so playback recording so i can actually tell this converter to do anything we really want to do flexibility wise i can send the pre-mix to the usb on the headphones and like i said cheat and then you know hear that on these little monitors and then hear the other one on the big monitors vice versa or you can flip it back and forth as you're seeing i'm doing in this video really quick now i just set everything to analog this is the simplest way to do it now how do i get pro tools to see that analog so as I look at Pro Tools, you're literally just taking this and I monitor directly from my monitor controller. I'm not monitoring really from Pro Tools at all. And I go back into the Amari. It's, it's two in and two out. This is about as simple as it gets. Now, if you have a bigger interface, it's the same concept, just more channels. So think of it that way. So this would be Amari in. So as you look at this, I'm going to turn this down so you can't hear the, the actual audio, um, but you'll see how it returns. There you go. Now it's returning and it's coming out of the, uh, you can see the, uh, you can actually, if I zoom out a little bit, you'll see the, the portico getting the signal and feeding it back in. And that's, it's that simple, guys. It's really that simple. Once again, before we zoom out the other camera, this is the back of it. So we have SPDIF out. This is how this routing goes. So SPDIF out of the Amari is feeding the SPDIF in on my Pure 2, which is hooked up to my monitors, or your monitor controller in your studio. The analog out of the Amari is feeding the analog input of the Portico, or whatever your bus processor is. The analog, I meant the, uh, the portico output is coming and returning, totally making a loop and returning back to the, the Amari's inputs. The reason that we have to have a dedicated monitor controller, if we don't do it that way, we are going to get a feedback loop because we can't send the USB directly out of that and then have it print back in to the same exact converter and try to print the analog you see what i mean so i guess what i'm saying you cannot do it without it because you're going to try to monitor back both and that doesn't work so you'll have a feedback loop and that was the only downside of this whole converter everything else is is a plus plus i mean you're you're using this thing and you listen to it and even if you're all in the box man this thing without hardware is just it's hard to beat i i love the the sound of it I listened to it for, for days on end when I first got it and just listening to, to how, uh, how natural it sounded, but how, how focused it sounded. Very cool for you audiophiles out there, guys that just want a killer sounding two channel converter. This is it. And everything that I've printed with this, and this is the testimony, and let me zoom the camera out, but the testimony in my, in my line of work All right, I think we're good. Let's let's leave that. So, the testimony in my line of work is: do the do the people that I'm working with like it? And they absolutely love it. They're like, dude, I don't know what you did to this, but it's 
sometimes it's just that small change like the converter or whatever you're using and that's what we did and and uh printing that and and being able to you know keep the pure two around because i still use that and then use a dual purpose with it as a monitor controller as well the pure two when i'm when i'm playing back it does not it does not at all defeat the purpose um the da on the pure two is incredible but i'm running a spit if signal to that converter so i'm getting that pure da from the actual um amari everything that comes through that box just sounds a little bit bigger a little bit more articulated a lot more focused uh it has a holographic image and it's it's really really something to listen to so this is a simple video on how to hook up a mastering converter to a mastering processor but also just a little review on the antelope amari if you have the chance to listen to that converter listen to it and i think you'll love it i'm not trying to take away from other converters out there this isn't a competition with different companies this is just something i've really fell in love with the sound of um, the antelope company is a really great company i've heard some people say like oh they're tech support and all this stuff and and i don't and i really want to tell you this like I've just really loved their equipment and it's worked well for me. I can see where like some of their stuff would be a little bit more advanced, but but a lot of the great um, engineers that I work with have chose those interfaces. And I'm not saying over other interfaces, but for me, I just love the sound of it. It it does something creatively that 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 I love. So um, my name is Doug Jenkins. I just wanted to show you that. I appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully you got something out of that. If you're not buying an Amari or you're not buying a processor, it's just basic signal flow out and in of a converter channel. As long as you have a dedicated monitor out, you're good to go. And that's how you do it. So you can go out of a track in Pro Tools, return it back to another track. I did do a, a video a while back about inserting hardware on a, on a, like a plug-in. But this is like a way to print it, and as as we've got more sessions, people want us to print it. So I'll end with this, and, and hopefully I can do this video up in Kent. There, there's a studio out there. Dude's got an amazing MCI board. But it'll go down that channel one. It'll return back into Pro Tools, and then it, you can have a return channel. So it's like out one, in one, and then like a 24-channel mixer is a 48-channel session. So we can we can monitor what we've what we've tracked but also what we're mixing and then we can print the whole mix just like i just showed you here but you're doing it on a bigger scale that's our stem service really that's what we do in stem mastering or stem mixing a uh, great friend of mine freddie uh demarco he does a a he has like a toft the vox boxes i mean it's insane what he has 76s 2as and and i'm actually using his 2a and 76 combo for a project i was doing but I mean, just that alone on vocals and, and reprocessing stems. If you're out there and you you love mixing and you just want to you want to mix like really really well done stems, you you can reach out to us on, on that as well. But yeah, mastering. I think just getting that final print with something like this is is really what a lot of people need out there. The next video I want to do is on mastering versus um, mastering versus like isotope. I have isotope and I've, I've bought some of that stuff. So once again, my name is Doug Jenkins. I mix N, the letter N, master.com. Um, yeah, send us some stuff out. We're looking forward to it. Ha Merry Christmas and stay safe out there with COVID. Uh, it, it's getting bad around our area. So, so prayers for the people out there that have to work and stuff. So hopefully you guys are all safe, and, and uh, if you've been affected by this, we're, we're praying for you. And, and um, yeah, there's there's a few things that have happened that, that really, really hit home with me. So, um, yeah, we'll see you guys. That's how you hook up hardware. It's that simple. So we'll see you. Boom.